goes on in endless song above earth's lamentations i hear the real though far off him that hails a new creation no storm can shake my inmost calm while to that rock i'm clinging since love is lord of heaven and earth how can i keep from singing through all the tumult and the strife i hear its music ringing It sounds an echo in my soul How can I keep from singing No storm can shake my inmost calm While to that rock I'm clinging Since love is lord of heaven and earth How can I keep from singing I know my savior lives what though the darkness gather round songs in the night he gives no storm can shake my inmost calm while to that rock I'm clinging since love is lord of heaven and earth how can i keep singing the peace of christ makes fresh my heart a fountain ever springing all things are mine since i am his how can i keep from singing no storm can shake my inmost calm while to that rock i'm clinging since love is lord of heaven and earth how can i keep from singing Greetings in the name of our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. We are delighted that you can join us for this worship service. If you are joining us from our St. Paul's website, I send your attention, direct your attention to the resources tab that is below the video screen. We actually have three resources for you today. As usual, we have a worship bulletin. And again, this week we are blessed with a children's message provided by his puppeteers. You'll see a link to that. And thirdly, a special resource today, we have a link to a video montage of our 2020 high school graduates. This would be the weekend that we would recognize them here in person, but as with many other things, we're doing it electronically today. So we encourage you, following the service, to take advantage of that resource as well. With that, we begin with our opening hymn.
name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Alleluia! Christ is risen! be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, the giver of all that is good, by your holy inspiration, grant that we may think those things that are right, and by your merciful guiding, accomplish them. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. We speak together responsively, Psalm 66. Bless our God, O peoples. Let the sound of his praise be heard.
For you, O God, have tested us. You have tried us as silver is tried. You let men ride over our heads. We went through fire and through water, yet you have brought us out to a place of abundance. That which my lips uttered and my mouth promised when I was in trouble. Come and hear, all you who fear God, and I will tell what he has done for my soul. If I had cherished iniquity in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. Blessed be God, because he has not rejected my prayer or removed his steadfast love from me. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our scripture reading is from 1 Peter chapter 3. Now who is there to harm you if you are zealous for what is good? But even if you should suffer for righteousness sake, you will be blessed. Have no fear of them, nor be troubled. But in your hearts regard Christ the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and respect, having a good conscience. So that when you are slandered, those who revile your good behavior in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if that should be God's will, than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the Spirit, at which he went and proclaimed to the spirits in prison, because they formerly did not obey. When God's patience waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was being prepared, in which a few, that is eight persons, were brought safely through water. Baptism, which corresponds to this, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, with angels, authorities, and powers having been subjected to him. This is the word of the Lord. Again, I remind you that if you click the resources tab on the bottom portion of your screen, you can pull up the children's message now by His Puppeteers, or we continue our worship now with our hymn.
grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The word of God which engages us is the scripture reading read previously, but especially 1 Peter 3, verse 15, where Peter writes, Always being prepared to give a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. Thus far the text. Dear friends in Christ, a somewhat personal question to begin. Do you have hope? Do you have confidence, a sense of optimism, especially when you consider your life and your future at this point? To be sure, there are many things in this world that seem to conspire together at times in order to try and destroy a sense of hope that we may have. For example, obviously, we are still living with the coronavirus that has caused many of us to live lives in somewhat isolation for about eight weeks now. It has caused many throughout our country, in fact, millions of people to either lose their employment or be furloughed by their employer. It has caused many businesses to close down, never to return, and it has caused more than 80,000 people to die in this country. But even apart from the coronavirus, there are other health concerns that can weigh on people and weigh them down over time. Or there are those times when relationships break up between people who once were close, causing us to move almost to a state of despair. Indeed, there are many things, these and many other things on this earth, that seem to conspire together at times in order to cause us to lose our hope. Well, our text for today is written by the disciple Peter, to Gentile Christians in Asia Minor who were being persecuted simply because of their faith in Jesus Christ. They weren't behaving badly and being punished for it, just the opposite. They were doing good and were being persecuted. They were being ridiculed, slandered, and even accused of being disloyal to the Roman government. Harassed simply because they were Christians. Peter's approach to them is interesting. He doesn't try to sugarcoat the situation and say, just hang in there, things will get better in the future. In fact, we know historically, things did not get better in the future. In fact, they got worse, much worse. And Peter doesn't say to them, just dig down deep inside you and you'll find the strength to persevere and to endure. Instead, Peter points them to a hope, a hope that they all have, a hope that is noticeable to other people. As Peter writes, being prepared always to give a defense to anyone who asks for a reason for the hope that is in you. And then Peter goes on to write about the two sources for that hope that these Christians and we share. The first is Jesus Christ himself. Peter points them to the unjust suffering that Christ endured. In other words, if they were going to start feeling sorry for themselves, or if we are going to start feeling sorry for ourselves, Peter says, take a look at the unjust suffering of Jesus Christ. There was never a suffering and a death more unjust on the face of this earth the sinless Son of God, suffering and dying. But Peter goes on then to say that this unjust suffering was, in fact, intentional. It was God's plan all along, that the righteous Son of God should suffer for the unrighteous. It's the very reason that he came to this earth in the first place. And so the sinless, righteous Son of God takes all of our unrighteousness upon him on the cross. And then that grand and glorious exchange takes place. We, the undeserving, unworthy, unrighteous, are given his perfect righteousness as a gift by God's grace through faith in Jesus Christ. 
And Peter goes on to say that Christ did all of this in order to bring us to God. Indeed, by our very nature, we were in a spiritual wasteland, in a spiritual wilderness, lost and unable to make our way to God on our own. But Christ came and sought us and found us and put us once again in a right relationship with God. What is the reason for the hope that those Christians addressed by Peter and we can have, regardless of the outward circumstances in our lives? The reason is Christ and all he has done for us. Secondly, Peter points them to the reason of baptism. And he does so in a very interesting way. He goes all the way back to Genesis chapters 6 through 8, to the time of Noah, when sin and evil was rampant upon this earth. Just listen to the description Moses gives in Genesis chapter 6, verses 5 through 8. The Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intention of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And the Lord regretted that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him to his heart. So the Lord said, I will blot out man whom I have created from the face of the land, man and animals and creeping things and birds of the heavens, for I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. Imagine that. God actually regretted that he had made man, and it grieved him. And so God caused torrential rains to come for 40 days and 40 nights. He opened up the springs below the earth, and those flood waters brought judgment upon all of that sin and all of that evil. You could also say that, that those flood waters brought a cleansing from all of that sin and all of that evil. It's almost as though God were starting over with the animals on that ark and with the eight people that Peter references who were saved. Those eight people, of course, were Noah and his wife and Noah's three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and their wives. And then Peter makes an astounding comparison. He says that baptism now corresponds to this. Baptism, in other words, corresponds to these eight people being brought safely through these cleansing waters in that ark. And Peter says, that baptism saves you. Just as they were saved, so also baptism saves you through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Peter can say that because in baptism, God joins us to Christ inseparably so that Christ death on the cross is our death on the cross. Christ's time in the tomb is our time in the tomb. And Christ's resurrection once again, his physical bodily resurrection is our physical bodily resurrection to new life once again. Now I would be remiss at this point if I didn't point out the comparison between our text for today and our baptismal font here at St. Paul's. The next time that you are here, and I hope that is soon, take a look at our baptismal font, and you will notice that like many baptismal fonts, it has eight sides. It's in the shape of an octagon, perhaps corresponding to those eight people who were brought safely through the waters in that ark. And take a look also on the side of the baptismal font, and you will see wood carvings there, and one of those wood carvings is in fact a carving of Noah's Ark. A wonderful comparison, a meaningful comparison between that flood and our baptismal font. It is important for us also to remember that baptism is not our action, it is not our statement of faith, it is not our pledge, it is not our commitment to God, it is exactly the opposite. God is at work in baptism to bring about the blessings through the water and the word. That's the only reason Peter can say that baptism now saves you. It's the only reason that he can say on Pentecost to his hearers, 
Repent and be baptized in the name of Christ Jesus, each and every one of you, for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the Holy Spirit. Why can we have hope, regardless of our outward circumstances in life? Because we are baptized children of God. And in baptism, God has washed away all of our sin. He has given us the gift of the Holy Spirit. He has made us his children. And he has made us heirs of everlasting life. A word now to our 2020 graduates. To say to them that this has been an unusual year would, of course, be an understatement. This year has been one like no other. And yet, graduates, you can go forward with that same hope, that same confidence, that same optimistic spirit, because, in fact, you are a baptized child of God. And because of what Jesus has done and will continue to do for you. He will continue to bless you just as you will be a blessing to everyone whom you encounter. And speaking of encountering people, it is Peter's desire, it is his fervent prayer that this hope that we have been given will be shared with others whom we encounter. Just as he said in the words of our text, being prepared at all times to give a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason, for the hope that is in you. If there's anything, perhaps, a silver lining in terms of the conditions that we are living in now, one of them, perhaps, is that people may be led to stop and think about what is really important in life. To stop and consider what is the purpose of life and of death. And perhaps at these times, They are more receptive to a word of hope from you. Is there anyone you know of who needs a word of hope at this time? Is there anyone with whom you could share the words of hope? We pray to God for opportunities and for words, words of hope. Bobby Knight, the legendary basketball coach for the Indiana Hoosiers, once wrote a book titled, the power of negative thinking. And in that book, he insisted that hope is the worst word in the English language. He said it is foolishness and it is laziness to think that things are just going to be all right. He says things will not be all right unless someone stands up and does something. Well, you know, I agree with Coach Knight. And the good news is that someone has stood up and done something. His name is Jesus Christ. He has come and he has suffered unjustly, the righteous for the unrighteous, and he has brought us to God. And through baptism, God has joined us to him inseparably, both now and eternally. And that, dear Christian friends, is our reason for hope. Amen. And now may the peace of God that passes all understanding guard your hearts and your minds in this one true faith unto life everlasting. Amen. We now confess the Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. 
and I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. For hope as we live day by day in your baptismal grace and in the sure and certain promises of sins forgiven and everlasting life, that we might have opportunity to share the reason for our hope with those around us. Lord, in your mercy, for the faithful proclamation of Jesus Christ to those who do not know him, including that of our mission of the month, Yisleta Lutheran Mission Human Care, on the Texas-Mexico border, that through hearing the word of the Lord, many may be brought to faith. Lord, in your mercy, for grace to trust you during this time of illness and distress. In mercy, put an end to the coronavirus that afflicts people around the world. Grant relief to those who suffer and comfort all who mourn. Sustain and protect all medical personnel and all first responders in their labors. And cause your people ever to serve you in righteousness and holiness. Lord, in your mercy, for all graduates, that you may continue to bless them and those who instructed them that as these graduates continue to learn and grow, grant them your Holy Spirit, that their talents and abilities may be used for your glory and as a blessing to others. Lord, in your mercy, for the sick and those who suffer, that God would grant healing to their bodies, peace for their minds, and consolation in their sorrows. Lord, in your mercy, for all who mourn the death of Ed Cause and all who mourn the death of Donald Phillips Jr., father of Beth Page, that they might join us in thanksgiving for all the blessings that you grant to these servants during their earthly lives, and especially for calling them to faith in Jesus Christ, that we might be comforted with the assurance of the resurrection to come and an eternal reunion in your presence. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, our God, as we recall the obedient life and life-giving death of your Son for our salvation, we pray you to strengthen our faith and to make our hearts bold until that day when we are delivered from the changes and chances of this mortal life and stand before you in heaven. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Lord, bless you and keep you. Lord, make his face shine upon you, be gracious to you. Lord, look upon with favor and give you peace. Alleluia, Christ is risen.
Christ be my leader, my night as by day, safe through the darkness, for He is the way. Gladly I follow, my future is care. Darkness is daylight when Jesus is there. In age as in youth, drifting or doubting, for He is the truth. Grant me to trust Him, though shifting as sand. Doubt cannot daunt me, in Jesus I stand. So